then it makes sense to take a look and say, do we need to rebalance is essentially what we're talking about to get back to the original of this thing with the current characteristic of the three before. So checking your current Absolutely. And I think we've got a chart that does a nice job of really illustrating what some of the potential benefits of that could be. And if you look at this chart, what you actually see is on the left hand side, you've got an investor who invested $100,000 at the beginning of 2008, which we know was a significant year in terms of it was a significant market sell off of stocks. 60 40% split between stocks and bonds, so balanced investor. What the middle chart actually shows is that after five years, at the end of 2012, Cisco. if that investment Cisco. had not rebounded, what are you doing? All, what, what are you doing? Are You're making a mess. And it's actually not distressing, right? It's a fairly nice return. But contrast that with what you see on the far right hand side. And what the right hand shows is really if that investor had been disciplined and actually rebalanced after that market sell-off, really, as, as you know, Ken mentioned before, enabling them to even um, participate more in the undervalued class at that point in time, they were in a better position at the end of 2012. It's fabulous. I think a lot of the investors who are looking at that chart right now are probably finding it interesting. It's a concept that I know we talk a lot about here, but until you see it on paper and see how it plays out with the numbers, Cisco? it's not always good. Don't lick. Yeah, that was a hey. concept to bring up. Cisco. The is that, that's important Don't lick. The, the Don't lick. The return lick. looks nice in this scenario. Good they boy. They not always play out. But importantly, they really do oh. um, get back to what they're... You like your bed now? Like well, <laughs> You're funny.